gives you a detailed outline of how you should eat. Plate, which is a normal dinner plate set. And on forward, on those toes, your back, on your heels. Hello, welcome to this week's of Bucks Live Well. I'm Whitney Kirk. I'm Victoria Longworth. And I'm Joy Thacker. And we're going to be talking to you all this week about how to eat healthy while eating out. Um, fast food is normally high in fat, high in sodium, and high in cholesterol. The amount of fat you need in your diet is based on your age, your activity level, and your gender. Total fat should be between 20 to 35 percent of your daily caloric needs. Excess sodium can lead to hypertension, also known as high blood pressure, so make sure you're not adding extra salt to your food. Excess saturated fat and cholesterol can increase your risk for um, heart disease. Here are some fast food statistics that you might not be aware of. Um, in today's economy, Americans are spending over $140 billion in fast food restaurants alone. There are 25,000 different fast food restaurant chains. Fast food restaurants um, in 2007 spent $250, $294 million in marketing aimed just at children. And many Americans think that they have to eat fast food because they live such busy lives and don't have time to cook. But in reality, that's not true. If you plan your um, trips to the store and you plan out your meals, it's actually a lot cheaper to eat at home and cook than it is to eat out every night. And most fast food items are loaded with saturated fat, sodium, and cholesterol. When looking at a menu, it is good to be aware of the detailed items on the menu. It's good to read those and see what is actually in the food. So here are some beware um, words that are good to be aware of when you're looking at food. So if something says buttered, sauteed, pan fried, fried, deep fried, French, breaded, cream sauce, or with gravy, it usually is a good indicator that the um, food item is high in fat. Here are some um, words that um, have to do with higher sodium food items, such as smoked, pickled, barbecued, in broth, um, in cocktail sauce, teriyaki, or with uh, soy sauce. Here are three popular food items from fast food restaurants. A, we have a sausage biscuit with egg from McDonald's, and a medium frappe mocha from McDonald's, and a four count chicken mini with a side of hash browns. If you look at the sausage biscuit with egg, it contains 510 calories and 14 grams of, of saturated fat. If you look at the medium frappe from McDonald's, it contains 560 calories and 70 grams of sugar. If you look at the um, Chick-fil-A, it contains 640 calories, 7 grams of saturated fat, and 1,310 grams of sodium. Here are some tips that will help you when making breakfast items um, when you're on the go. I know fast food, there are limited um, options, but you can ask for scrambled eggs um, or an egg substitute omelet. Make sure you ask for your um, margarine, butter, and syrups on the side. It's a good idea to drink skim or low-fat milk. Um, stay away from combination sandwiches. Those are usually indicators that they are loaded with extra calories that aren't needed. And um, a good option is to select toast or English muffins instead of your bagels, your donuts, your um, biscuits, croissants, and danishes. Ow. 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 As we learned from Whitney earlier, the calories, the fat grams, the sodium, and the fiber are very important in our diet and how we make our choices in a restaurant. The next few slides, we're going to be looking at those, specifically the calories and the fats and the sodium, to determine what we should order. On this slide, we can see at McDonald's, we see the fruit and maple oatmeal would be a great choice for our to, us to order because it has 290 calories, the fat grams are 4.5 grams, and the sodium is only 160. Whereas the Egg McMuffin has 300 calories and 12 grams of fat, and the sodium is 820 milligrams. Either one of these would be a good choice, but if we were to order the bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit, that would not be near as good of a choice 
because of the 420 calories, the 23 fat grams, and the 1,160 sodium. There are two grams of fiber though. In this next slide, we're gonna look at popular lunch choices on this campus. We have a Quiznos, so many of us would go in and order the large honey mustard chicken and bacon sub that has 1,355 calories. That's a lot of calories for one sub. Now at Einstein Brothers, there's the Italian chicken lunch panini, and it has 850 calories. That's still quite a few calories. Starbucks has an awesome peppermint white chocolate mocha, but it's packed and loaded at 640 calories. When we look at Chick-fil-A, I know many of you like Chick-fil-A as I do, but if I was to go up and order, I would choose a char-grilled chicken salad with a light honey mustard at 240 calories with six grams of fat and 870 grams of sodium. Also, the char-grilled chicken sandwich only has 290 calories and four grams of fat, but it does have 1,030 milligrams of sodium. We would not want to choose the traditional chicken sandwich with the waffle fries. Because if we look at the calories, it's 700 calories for that. 31 grams of fat and the sodium, 1,535 milligrams of sodium. Our next slide shows us if we go out for a sample dinner at a restaurant with some friends. They usually bring us some rolls maybe one and a half rolls equals about 300 calories. I really didn't realize that. Did you all? Then we get our side salad, but we only put three tablespoons of ranch dressing on it. And it comes out to 350 calories. So we think we're doing really good when we're eating out. But then if we look on down at the traditional meal, a meal will be about 1,000 calories at least if we only eat 75% of that meal, we're still consuming 750 calories. Then the real kicker is the cheesecake. But we decide we're only gonna eat half of that cheesecake. Well, the whole cheesecake piece of it is 800 calories. We're gonna split the half with our guest. That leaves us with 400 calories. When we total all these calories up that we've consumed at this one meal, it leaves us at 1,800 calories. The next slide shows us Chili's, popular restaurant here in the Tri-Cities. A margarita chicken comes out to 260 calories, or we could go with the spicy garlic and lime shrimp that's only 150 calories. But if you look at the two of these, which would be good choices, we can go on and look at the fat grams. The margarita chicken has six grams of fat, and the spicy garlic and lime shrimp has eight grams of fat. But look at the sodium, big sodium difference. The margarita chicken's 350 milligrams, whereas the shrimp is double that at 700 milligrams. We would not want to order the following two items at Chili's, that being the Monterey chicken, which I understand is a very popular item there. It's 500 calories with 25 grams of fat. The sodium is 1,060 milligrams with two grams of fiber. But the barbecue chicken salad, I've had that even though it's grilled. It's 970 calories for that one salad with 62 grams of fat, 2,170 milligrams of sodium. That's a lot of sodium in a salad. <laughs> and nine grams of fiber. Oh, Charlie's. There's one of those up at exit seven in Bristol and all around the Tri-Cities. If we look at the grilled or the black fish, and we add a rice or a baked potato to it, and we must get the steamed veggies. We come out to less than 800 calories and 40 grams of fat. 
with this meal. But if we do the good old southern fried chicken salad with the honey mustard dressing, it's going to be 1,800 calories and 85 grams of fat. There's a big difference there. So how many calories and grams of fat are going to be in the following popular appetizers in, in these restaurants? We're going to look at Red Lobster, Chili's, Ruby Tuesday's, and Outback. At Red Lobster, I don't know about you, but I love those cheddar cheese biscuits when they bring them. And that one biscuit, this is one biscuit, is 160 calories with 9 grams of fat. Chili's bottomless tostada chips and salsa, I could eat those. And especially when I'm really hungry before the meal comes, those are 480 calories and 36 grams of fat. Ruby Tuesday's cheddar fries, I know my daughter really likes those. When she found out they were 1,200 calories and 68 grams of fat, she eats them, but just not near as many as she used to. And Outback's Steakhouse Bloomin' Onion, my dad used to order that all the time. 2,210 calories for that Bloomin' Onion and 134 grams of fat. That'll put some calories on. Now, just real quick, I have uh, I use my iPhone quite a bit, and I use an app. It's called the Restaurant Nutrition app, and you can get it. It's free, and the updates are $3.99 when they add the restaurants. There's over 100 restaurants with about 300 different items on those. So if you're interested, just go to the app store and get that. Like I said, it's free. I'm Victoria and I'll be talking to you about some healthy tips you can use when eating out. When eating out at an Italian restaurant, to start off with an appetizer, choose a minestrone or bean soup. They are usually prepared with less fat. If you're going to eat the bread, only dip it in a little bit of olive oil instead of soaking it. Avoid fried dishes such as the eggplant parmesan and chicken parmesan dishes. Avoid large portions of meat and dishes with a lot of cheese. And you can also ask your server if your meat and vegetables can be sauteed in broth or wine instead of oil. Also try and choose red sauces instead of the creamy sauces for less calories. At a Mexican restaurant, we all love to eat the chips and salsa that they sit out on the table. We eat and eat until our medi meal is ready for us, but the problem with this is that they tend to have 20 to 30 calories each, so the calories really add up fast when you're not paying attention. Try to eat at least about 5 to 10 chips and indulge on the salsa picante sauce or um, pico de gallo for flavor and less fat. If you choose the nachos at a Mexican restaurant, they're meant to be shared with everyone because each loaded chip has around 80 calories and 5 grams of fat. You can also choose non-fried tortillas instead of fried ones. A taco salad is a pretty good choice, but try not to eat the whole shell because it is about 400 calories alone. And last, Try to limit the extras such as sour cream, cheese, and guacamole. Eating at an American style restaurant. In the South, we love our fried meats and vegetables, so we want to avoid those as much as possible because they contain two to three times more calories than the baked, grilled, or broiled choices. You can try removing the skin from fried chicken that will save about 100 calories. You want to select leaner cuts of beef, such as filet, sorling, or kebab, and go with a baked potato instead of mashed potatoes or fries, and try to put the toppings on the side. Eating pizza. Some good tips to eating pizza in healthy ways is choosing a thin crust. You can blot the oil off of the top of the pizza. Choose 
tomato bases instead of creamy bases for less calories and order your pizza light on the cheese. Try to eat one big piece or two small pieces and you can pair it with a salad to help make you feel full. Some other choices is going um, light on toppings such as um, pepperoni sausage cheese and piling on lower fat toppings such as peppers, tomatoes, <clears throat> and other vegetables such as artichokes instead. And you can also make your own pizza at home, that way you can control what goes on and how it's cooked. Eating at an Asian restaurant. Try and start off with a soup such as egg drop or hot and sour soup to save on calories. You can request your rice to be steamed instead of fried. Some appetizer options could be choosing the steam, the steamed dumplings and spring rolls instead of the egg rolls because the egg rolls are fried. Avoid fried meat dishes such as sweet and sour chicken, Kung Pao, General Tso's, and lemon chicken. And limit add-ons such as things like sauces and nuts. And you can ask if your stir-fried dish can be cooked in as little oil as possible. Eating sushi can be very healthy, but it depends on how you get it ordered. Looking for things like words describing um, the sushi roll as tempura means that it's fried, so you want to stay away from the fried options and make sure that there's no other fried items, maybe such as fried tuna in them as well. You can make sure that there is a low sodium option of soy sauce even though that the soy sauce is low in calories, it's also high in sodium. Um, on, also a good appetizer would be the choice of the edamame. Edamame is low in calories and full of protein. Eating at delis to um, make sure that you're not eating as many calories and sodium um, when you order your sandwich and they bring it to your table, you can take off some of the meat to save on calories and sodium. You can make sure that you put topping or condiments such as mustard instead of mayonnaise. Request baked chips instead of regular chips and stay away from fattening sides such as pasta salad. Also try to make sure you put lower fat toppings such as vegetables like tomatoes lettuce, cucumbers, sprouts, or carrot shreds. And if the option is available, ask for whole wheat or pita bread instead of white because there um, is more fiber and will help you feel full longer. How to handle salad bars. Salads can be a great option for a meal because it's full of vitamins and minerals but can easily be made unhealthy. Some tips to make it as healthy as possible is using fat-free, low-fat salad dressing or plain vinegar. Top your salad with beans or chickpeas to add fiber and protein. And try to stay away from adding so much cheese, bacon, or croutons to, to the fat content. You can add cottage cheese instead for that extra protein. For your base, try and choose darker leafy greens such as spinach, arugula, kale, romaine, or spring mix instead of the iceberg lettuce. When you go to eat at a cookout, choose a veggie or turkey burger option instead of the regular beef option. If not, you can try eating just half of your burger or hot dog to save on calories and then fill up on other veggies or salads. Other options like potato salads are usually higher in mayonnaise so you want to avoid that. Baked beans are also healthy but it still has are kind of high in calories so try and eat a smaller portion of that and try to get rid of the 
um, sodas because they have more sugar in it. Instead, you can drink plain or sparkling water and add some fruit for flavor. Healthy snacks away from home. Try not to leave the house hungry so you won't eat the first thing that you see when you go out. Snacks at theme parks, malls, theaters, their snacks are fattening and higher in calories. So plan ahead and take healthier snacks to crave that sweet tooth, more like eating nuts or dried fruits instead of getting a candy bar while you're out. Some convenience stores now are offering fruit as a snack option, so when you're traveling, you can stop there and look for that as a snack option. In closing, remember these general tips for eating out. Eating a healthy snack containing protein before you go to a restaurant will help you keep from eating as much. You can try eating Greek yogurt, string cheese, or hummus and crackers. To choose restaurants where there is low fat and healthy options, try to pick a baked potato instead of french fries or get a side of mixed vegetables instead. You can always ask your server if your vegetable, if you can add vegetables in place of the healthier items such as your fried rice or the starchy vegetables. And request that they cook your um, meats or vegetables in wine or broth instead of the oil. And try to stay away from creamy sauces. If you order a sandwich or a burger, add um, other condiments instead of mayonnaise because it has more fat. And most importantly, try to practice portion control. All of the meals when you go out to eat are usually larger portions than you need to eat. So try eating half of it or taking half home with you for the next day. This concludes Buck's Live Well Eating Out Survival Guide. Thanks.